Hi all, hope we're all staying safe and well uh, and the videos that have been up so far have been really useful to you. Um, yesterday I put up a video that was looking at essay planning and looking at strategies that we can use to plan a response on and inspect the calls. Um, I had a few people message me afterwards asking about the the strong paragraph at the end of that video looking at if we could spend a bit more time um breaking it down and looking at how we go about doing that and putting it putting a paragraph together like almost live so that's what the focus of today's video is going to be it might be slightly shorter than some of the other ones because we're going to look at one paragraph we're going to look at a different one we're going to look at the character sheila and we're going to look at um a response based on that we have to bear in mind this is based on an essay plan that's already been done uh, where you have your quotations ready and your revision already sorted but we are going to look about how we go about structuring a full paragraph ideally a paragraph that would be marked at a grade eight or a grade nine Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to be able to pick up on a point or an idea that we'd like to express. So for the character of Sheila, the point I'm going to be looking at is the fact that she is naive and immature about the world. So beyond that, we need to think about the quotations that are going to be relevant to this. Now, if we go back and either watch the video or we look back at our notes page, that we'll know that there are several different um, quotations that we can use to support the idea that Sheila is a naive character. For example, the fact that she refers initially to her parents as mummy and daddy, and then as the play progresses, they refer to as mother and father. Now that's a really useful starting point because we've got something that's progressing across the play. We have, uh, for example, when um, she finds out about the death of Eva Smith, she asks, how horrible was it an accident? The naivety to think that someone could drink a, a large amount of disinfectant and it would be an accident shows the naivety. And then we think about later on in the play as the growing maturity, these girls aren't cheap labour, they're people as we emerge from that. So having that bank of quotations ready is really, really useful because what we're trying to do as a, as a higher level candidate is to include more than one quotation per paragraph and use these short snappy phrases and embed them within what we're trying to do. Okay, so the first thing I've tried to do with my point here is to include something specific about the character, but also try and do something a little bit more ambitious, to try and say it in a way that is going to impress the examiner, that is going to make them think, actually, this person knows what they're talking about. So what we have is, Priestley uses Sheila's naivety, innocence, and lack of perspective to highlight the injustices in society and the way upper-class young people could be completely oblivious to the inequality in the social structures beneath them. So immediately what we're seeing here is this is a candidate who knows what they're talking about. They have ad adjectives to describe Sheila that are, um, that are more sophisticated. So we have naivety, um, we've got injustice, we've got oblivious. Okay. We've also started to make a point about the whole play and the fact that this is a construction. It's important to remember that we should be using the word priestly because we're looking at the fact that it is priestly's point of view it's priestly who's as the writer as the playwright who has constructed the character of sheila sheila isn't a real person it's this is his point of view and his ideas being expressed through this so that point straight away we're setting out to the examiner we know exactly what we're talking about that they're talking about the idea of naivety innocence and that they are uh, young people at the time were oblivious to the social structures beneath them Okay, our next step has to be to include some evidence from the text which supports your point of view. You can't get out of the bottom band, essentially, without including evidence from the text. It's one of the most important parts of the um, essay writing process. It's you showing and demonstrating to the examiner that you can make ideas, uh, can tell us ideas about the character, but you can also reference the specific parts that um, support your point of view. So my evidence that I've got in here is as Sheila first learns about the death of Eva Smith, she describes it using the adjective horrible and says, was it an accident? This naive rhetoric enforces Priestley's message of social separation as Sheila feels it's possible to ingest a large amount of disinfectant to be an accident, highlighting her lack of knowledge and care for the wider world. So if we're going to take this in two parts, the first part in this uh, part of the paragraph 
is adding in my evidence. So what we can see at the start is as Sheila learns about the death of Eva Smith, she describes it using the adjective horrible and was it an accident? Now what I've tried to do here is rather than using phrases like this is shown in the quotation or this is the quote that shows this, I've tried to embed it into a phrase. Now this is a skill that's really, really useful because it makes you get, you can get into your um, analysis quicker and it makes your writing flow a little bit better. So we have uh, as she learns about the death of Eva Smith, she describes it using the adjective horrible. Now, what I try to do is embed that into the sentence where she describing it as this particular word gives us that sense of embedding. With our evidence, we then need to start to explore what it means, suggests and reveals to us as a reader. So as we highlighted previously, we're looking at the adjective horrible, the rhetorical question, and was it an accident? So as I said in this paragraph, this naive rhetoric enforces Priestley's message of social separation as Sheila feels it is impossible, it's possible to ingest a large amount of disinfectant and as an accident, highlighting her lack of knowledge and care of the wider world. What we can see here is I'm starting to explore what the significance of these words is, using the terminology of appropriate, so things like adjective or rhetoric if it's appropriate. But essentially what I'm saying here is that this precise message of social separation uh, is present because Sheila feels it's possible to invest, ingest disinfected as an accident. What this does is highlights her lack of knowledge and care for the wider world. So vocabulary here, such as highlights, reveals, suggests, infers, the language of analysis is going to be really, really significant at this point. Now, a lot of candidates would actually stop at that point, having made their idea about Sheila being naive and how she uh, is unaware of the social situation and found some evidence and analysed that. And for a lot of candidates, that's as far as they will get. They've analysed using the point, evidence, explain method that we talked about in the last video. However, if you want to take this a bit further, if you want to be pushing onto the top boundaries, especially the sort of grade eights and grade nines, it's important to consider across the whole play and to think about the same ideas at different points within the text because we could talk about how characters mature, change, develop or lack of development if you like. So what I've added onto the paragraph here is a further inference looking at how Sheila changes across the play. She doesn't always stay the same. She's not always this naive character that we know from the start. So we've got this. However, as the play progresses, Sheila grows in stature and maturity, changing her vocabulary accordingly. Initially, her dress to mummy and daddy seemed childlike, innocent and immature. Yet as she's exposed to the message of the inspector, Sheila's noun choice of mother and father support her growing stature. What we have here, I've tried to include some further evidence, and again, I've tried to explore it again. So it's essentially it's the same methodology of using evidence and explaining, but I'm talking about a further part in the play. I'm trying to bring in some extra analysis and some extra detail there that's going to demonstrate to the examiner that I understand this as a whole play. Now, I've not actually done a huge amount there. The only evidence that I've got are four words, mummy, daddy, mother, father. There's not a huge amount that I have to remember there, but what I've done is I've demonstrated to the examiner that this my awareness of the play is good, critical, and I'm considering the whole text. Okay, to wrap up my paragraph, what I need to try and do is link it back to the question or the idea or the concept or the context, these big things that we're going to be talking about as essay topics. Uh, like we looked at with Mr. Byrne yesterday, the key question was is about him being unlikable. With this question with Sheila, we're probably looking at her characteristics or her changeability throughout the play. We want to be bringing in Priestley's values, Priestley's messages, Priestley's ideas. So the bit highlighted here is the reflection back. This is the, if you're doing the point evidence explains to be my developed part at the end of the paragraph, I'm uh, linking it back to the question. Ultimately, Sheila grows as an individual, challenging her father's steadfast beliefs of capitalism and, being, and using juxtaposition in her famous phrase, these girls aren't cheap labour, they're people. 
By challenging her father using the adjective cheap compared to the collective noun people, Sheila is rejecting the capitalist philosophy, reinforcing Priestley's message and socialist values. Now, you don't necessarily have to include another quotation there. I have done because I thought it was relevant. I thought it was um, a good opportunity to use that quotation. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, there's plenty of evidence in the paragraph already. You could even take that out and say, ultimately, Sheila grows an individual challenging her for stead father's steadfast beliefs of capitalism. Um, reinforcing Priestley's message, and that's absolutely fine. You don't necessarily need to include another quotation there. But if you get the opportunity to use these short embedded phrases, it is quite a useful thing to do. Okay, so I hope that was a more pleasant experience not having to look at my face for most of this video. Um, for you to do, we've now looked at the key characters from an inspector called in quite a lot of depth with revision um, ideas for the quotations, some key points, some key ideas. We've also had a look briefly at essay planning. Um, each video has some suggested activities you might like to have a look at or some key questions you might want to consider. Uh, if you are doing any paragraphing, obviously, if you'd like to send it to me, then please do and I'll have a look at it and see how we're getting on with these. Um, if you're just using it for your own um, records and for your own revision, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, Hopefully these have been really useful. Hopefully these last couple of videos have been a little bit different having a look at this idea of essay style um, and hoping to push you a little bit further into um, a, a deeper level of analysis if you like. Um, stay tuned and we've got the film recommendation coming up. The film recommendation today, I've gone for the classic underdog story, um, a feel-good movie about someone overcoming adversity and reaching their full potential, and that's Rocky. Um, from the iconic score to the um, the iconic scenes of him training, running up the steps and saluting the city as he reaches the top, um, some fantastic lines um, in the film. And that final, I'm not going to spoil it, but the final um, shout to Adrian would is a, a fantastically well-constructed film um, and a bit of a feel-good one looking at underdogs and looking at um, overcoming adversity. So until next time, I hope everyone stays safe and um, I'll see you for the next one.